The other day, I was traveling for a meeting. Having saved the packet of peanuts for later, I deboarded the flight and hopped into a lift. In the car, the driver had a local radio station on, which is great, being that, you know, I kind of like music. But what I heard left me uh, confused. Maybe perplexed is the better word. And if I were to take it a step further, I became more and more stressed during this ride to my meeting. I'm not typically one that gets overly stressed. But with each song played, it was just the chorus or the hook or the, the most familiar part of the song. And maybe, maybe even that was just 60 seconds of each song before it went into another song. But again, just the hook. No introduction, no verse, and definitely no second verse. Just the sing-along chorus, and that was it. And just as I would get settled into one song, it would switch again into another. It was kind of like those bite-sized samples at Costco where you walk around and nibbling bits and pieces here and there, but all the while knowing there really isn't anything of substance with each one. But then, you know, we go back to the samples after about 20 minutes, thinking that, hey, maybe they don't remember us. Oh, they do. They do. You know they do. Even if they don't say it, you know they're thinking, oh, you again. But going back to the car ride in L.A., I couldn't stop thinking about it afterward. If there was ever the perfect example of how we have become so second-natured, and not focusing, this was it. Just as I started getting into a song, it was quickly interrupted by another one. And just as that song settled in, it was then ripped for another one. As if the disc jockey was saying, oh yeah, check this one out. Even though I was like, wait, 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 I I, I like this, I I want to hear more of this. Nah, there's something else. It's exhausting. Thoughts. Just like our thoughts. We have anywhere from 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And each one is like that radio station. One thought interrupting the other. Interrupting the next. Interrupting the next. Even if it's a thought we were sitting in and, and enjoying. One small bite and another and another not a single one of substance. But then we go back to them, thinking that well, maybe this time it'll be different. But it never is. Look, there's nothing wrong with catchy pop songs or even tiny samples of chocolate-covered strawberries. But if that's all that we hear, if that's all that we eat, I can say with certainty that we are emotionally deficient. Water, water everywhere nor any a drop to drink for you literature geeks out there like me. We're starving in a world of samples. I'm looking for substance. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. What are you thinking? Really, like even listening to this podcast, are you thinking about what you're going to do next or as soon as you hear the to find more episodes of Comedown Down Podcast when that's done are you balancing spreadsheets while watching the new Bridgerton series while also putting dinner into the Instapot no shade, I do the same well, I mean, I haven't started either season of Bridgerton but that's for a later conversation but if we're looking for substance in our day much less life we're not going to find it nibbling. Many of you know what a fan I am of the monk Thich Nhat Hanh, and he has a technique, if you will, of washing the dishes. Odd, I know, but stick with me. It's actually pretty life-changing once you allow it to be. In the 1940s, Han was an entry-level monk at a Vietnamese monastery. Being the new kid, He was often assigned the task of cleaning dishes, many times during cold winter days. 
And with only ashes and husk of rice to use, since Amazon wasn't really around and they didn't have soap, the only thing that could have made it more miserable was for there to only be freezing cold water, which, ironically, the monastery had an abundance of. The monastery has since upgraded to modern appliances, and even hot water, which has made the process much faster and, of course, easier, allowing the monks to move on to their next task, or to sit for a nice tea after the kitchen is all cleaned up. But what's remarkable is how Thich Nhat Hanh felt this wasn't an improvement at all, but rather a problem. Stick with me, I'm getting somewhere, I promise. He believed that doing dishes to have clean dishes, well, it was the wrong way to clean dishes. He thought the right way is to clean the dishes purely for the sake of cleaning dishes. It's a bit confusing, I understand, so let me open it up a little bit. If we clean them quickly, like it's a chore that we don't want to do and that we just want to move on to something else, and then we're not really cleaning them. We're only doing it so we can get to the, the tea that's waiting for us once we're done. And then once you've reached that cup of tea, well, your thoughts turn to, well, what's after this? You're not even aware of the taste of the tea that's in your mouth. Ripped away from the present and into the future, unable to live a few moments of either one. I want to let that sink in really quick, because I'm guilty of this every moment of the day, I feel like. Ripped away from the present an end to the future, unable to live a few moments of either one. Chad, you say, this sounds ridiculous. You're saying in order for me to be happy, I need to wash more dishes? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. But speaking from personal experience, and yes, I have tried this myself, focusing solely on the dishes each item with actual care when washing them, not trying to hurry through the next chore or activity. Honestly, it was one of the most calming things I've done in quite some time. I know you think I'm crazy, and it is kind of silly to find Zen on a plate, but it's about directing your mind to tune into just one single thought. Trust me, just, just once. And if, if not over the dishes, try it over something else, like brushing your teeth or cooking a meal, walking from one room to another. Whatever it is that you're doing, be deliberate in your thoughts when you're doing it. When I focused on just the dishes, my mind it wasn't racing. It wasn't stressed. I wasn't sampling the buffet of interruptions. Yeah, it took effort, and there were some random thoughts, but I turned my mental spotlight onto the plate, and then onto the spoon, and then the cup. But here's the fascinating part. I've started thinking this way away from the sink. Like, when I water my plants, I have this large fiddle-leaf fig tree in my studio. I love this tree. And each time I water it, I intentionally notice how the water slowly seeps into the dirt, imagining that the tree is drinking every bit of this nourishment. Or even when I'm taking the midday break to walk our dog, Derby, and going without listening to music, or to even a podcast, but just being outside, feeling the sun, and hearing the birds... My yoga practice has become more focused, my time at the piano more concentrated, and conversations with my wife and kids and friends, it's, it's more satisfying. I know this sounds pie in the sky, and I didn't magically land at this happy headspace after a night of scrubbing pans. Of course, I think about tomorrow, or what's next to my list. But the practice of centering my mind on what's in front of me has been so freeing. I can't even put it into words. I'm, I'm serious. And, and even creating this episode, I thought it was silly, but I had to share because it's made such a difference. It's allowed me to slow the incessant 
bombardment of randoms, which has allowed me to enjoy things I've always seen as just mundane, annoying even. Think about it this way. With 50,000 thoughts a day, that's 2,100 thoughts an hour. An hour. No wonder it is so difficult for us to feel grounded, to focus on our given purpose, or to even know what feeling a certain way about anything, what it is, if we're constantly distracted. I know this episode sounds silly. I I, I get it. Washing your way to happiness. And I have to be honest, I had my doubts. But try it. Just try it. Just once. Once that door opens and your mind has had a taste of something rich, something meaningful, even in its plainness, it'll find more ways, more opportunities, more dishes, if you will. Your mind will seek nurturing moments, I promise you, because it's so good. There's a world of chaos, and it can be incredibly difficult to find peace and fulfillment. There are so many things that it's just vying for our attention, and it can be tough to stay focused on what's important. Thich Nhat Hanh once said, In the world of chaos, the one who can focus is king. And I get it. it, it's, it he's so right, because it's healing, even mentally. Don't waste the present moment by thinking what's next. What you learn at the sink will start to show in life. I'm going to say that again, as silly as it is. What you learn at the sink will start to show in life. Find the focus. Hear the song from start to finish, all the way through. Soak in the substance as you quiet the mind and find peace in the solitude of stillness. Even if that means starting with a dirty dish. To find more episodes of Comet Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CometDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature. But my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.